All right, wonderful. Take your Bibles, if you would, please, tonight, and open to the book of, uh, let me make sure, Proverbs chapter number 16. Proverbs chapter number 16. If there is one thing that we oftentimes desire to do, that's to be able to meet with God. We do want to be able to meet with him because there's oftentimes things we want to bring to him. There's a need that we want to present to God because we want him to get involved, to help adjust circumstances, or change our understanding, or to, uh, or to move things that are in the pathway. And in that, in that particular juncture, when we come to God, we want something to be done because we would like something in our environment to change. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, the only problem is sometimes God changes things that are not what we want changed. He changes things that are necessary. But it's always a positive thing to come to the Lord. But have you ever noticed that sometimes it seems like sometimes when we come, the, the result doesn't happen maybe as quickly as we'd like it to. And uh, some folks even get frustrated because they believe that even though they have gone to God many times, it seems like nothing has taken place. The Apostle Paul did the same thing when he came to God over something that was very apparent in his own life. There was a, uh, a thorn that had been given to him. By the way, God is the one that gave it to him. And uh, in that instance, he realized because God finally revealed to him the reason why I gave you this thorn is so that you don't think more, more highly of yourself than what you ought to think. And uh, in that manner, there is a, an element where maybe you have, you have come to God on many and multiple and often occasions, and he has always given some sort of answer, some type of relief, or some kind of understanding for the circumstance that you've presented. And, uh, and when he doesn't seem to answer, it, you begin to wonder what, what, what's happened, what's changed, what has is, what is gone awry. In that manner, there is always the instance where God is working on your heart and mind. The positive thing about it is when we come to him, that's his desire. A desire that God has, of course, is to spend time with you. It, out of everything that is done and everything that has been created in creation, the one thing that God wanted from man was the fact, I want to give someone, somebody, a creation that I make the ability to choose to love me. And so when they come to me, it's because they want to. Now, just as a, uh, we oftentimes may come to God because we have a request. That's not a problem. He, he deals in that. He is, he is God. He is Jehovah. He is the one that does answer prayer. Matter of fact, part of his character is that he who answers prayer. And in that manner, so we know that we can come to him and make our request and God's but he has put himself in a position to want to answer and to answer our requests and, and our needs and things of that nature. But he also wants us to come to him just because we want to. Not because we want anything from him, but just because we want to spend some time with him. That is probably, and by the way, uh, I, I said it before, even though God is not a physical God, God is an, an emotional God. He is. And, uh, and it's made very prevalent in scripture. But the thing that you and I need to understand is when we come to him, there is somewhat of a process for his presence that he requests. And uh, as, as I've said before, and uh, when he says come boldly to the throne of grace, it's not to bust through the doors of the throne room, stomping our feet, demanding things and wanting our rights from him. That's, that's not a way to present ourselves. But in that manner, uh, the book of Proverbs gives us a little understanding in when we come to God. You see, even Moses and the people around understood that, uh, that there was some significance in the preparation before we took some time to meet with him. And uh, because Moses was told, I will meet with you in three days. And in those three days, you begin to prepare yourself to meet with God. And uh, there was even the occasion where he said, nobody may touch this mountain. Don't tell them not to touch it or I'll kill them. And so there was some definition to the meeting with God in order to, uh, in order to have his presence known 
and, uh, and the connection that is there. Now, because of, the, because of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, we don't have to go through all of that process. We can, we can come straight to the throne room of God. He made that available to us. And we should often do that. But there's a couple things that uh, Solomon understood very clearly when we come before God and we want something from him, with him, or whatever the case may be, there is a few things that we need to take note of if we should. So why does God seem to meet with some and not with others? Why is that meeting sometimes available and then to some and not to others? Well, there is somewhat of a, a rational reason for it, because not because you've set an appointment. <laughs> it's because you've prepared to be able to meet with him. So let's look at those things if we could tonight for just a few minutes. Proverbs chapter number 16. So I want to help you with just your meetings with God, your meetings with God. Notice in chapter number 16, beginning in verse number one, the preparation of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirits. Commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. Now, these first six verses, as Solomon is writing, he has given some, some definition to our ability to be able to meet with God. So I want you to notice as we go through these things just a little bit, the very first thing is this, the, pre the preparation of the heart. The very first thing that he addresses is the preparation of the heart. Because he even makes note of it here in the verse number one, the preparation of the heart in man, and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. So when you're getting ready to come to God, there is some, okay, why does he meet with some? Because some are prepared for that. Some have planned for that meeting and they know when they come before God that there is a need. Now, sometimes, don't get me wrong, you can come at any moment, any time, because sometimes circumstances arise and you need to run to God. And uh, when those circumstances arise, he never says, nope, it's going to take time before you can come to me. He, he does not do that. But sometimes when it's, it's almost like planning that, that, that time to spend with him. And uh, whether it's, okay, fellas, you remember when it was time to go on that date with, uh, uh, with the girlfriend that you were really trying to impress. Now, it never hurts to continue to do this, but one thing that you did is uh, you made sure to get cleaned up. You made sure that you went and you, you got the, the actual soap this time and begin to rub it on yourself. And, uh, uh, you know, you did just hose down out in the yard for the most part. You actually got in the shower or whatever the case may be and you scrubbed off some of the, uh, the dirt and some of the smell that has acquired over the time. And then you got some of the, the high karate and put it on. And so... Uh, <laughs> I don't even know if they sell that anymore. And so, but uh, uh, in that instance, I had to throw that in there because some can appreciate that. Uh, but, uh, and, and so you were preparing for that meeting. Why? Because, uh, because you're wanting to basically get a bank loan from them? Well, hopefully not. You know, because you were wanting them to clean your car? Could have been, could have been. And so, uh, but uh, at the same token, you wanted, to, you wanted to make an impact and an impression and you wanted to prepare yourself so that you were not, here's the word, offensive. You didn't want to bring an offense against uh, the person that you're beginning to meet with. Same thing with God. Now, because he's not a physical God, it's not necessarily just the, the cleansing of the body that he's looking for. He is looking for the cleansing of the heart. The preparation of the heart is this. I don't want my, the things that I have taken in during the week and the things that I have allowed myself to engage in to be offensive to my Savior when I come to him. I don't want to address him with an offensive term. I don't want to come to him with today's jargon. I don't want to come to him with today's and the world's things that have attached themselves to me. I want to prepare myself for this time that I'm going to spend time with God. And it does us well now to keep in mind that even when we, uh, even when our, our, our spouses, our loved ones today, if we're going to spend some time with them, we may take some time to get straightened up, try to comb our hair and freshen up a little bit and uh, dig in the back of the medicine cabinet to dig out the high karate now. And so, uh, but uh, in that instance, it is the preparation of the heart. Because as Solomon is reminding us here, he's saying, because God is not a physical God, it's not necessarily just the outside that he is looking at, although that is important. We need to make sure that's adjusted. But the preparation of the heart. 
In other words, he is saying, why are you coming to God? Know why you're going there in the first place. Now, sometimes I just go to him because he has said that he wants to spend time with me. Truth is, I don't understand it completely. Truth is, it kind of makes no sense because I know me. And uh, in that manner, but I, I am so grateful that he never casts me away. I never knock on the door where he says, I'm busy, go away. I never ring the phone and he says, it lets it go to call waiting or whatever. He never screens the calls. He always answers every single time. Sometimes I don't have a request. Sometimes it's just, Lord, I, I just want to spend some time with you. And in that manner, there's things that he reminds me of when I get there. Because when I come to him, he says, you may need to take care of this. And you may begin to address that. Because notice, in, as Solomon is giving it to us here, he says, the preparation of the heart in man, the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. Because there's many times where I don't know what I'm going to do, what I should do, and how to take care of a circumstance or situation. So I go to him so that he can give me the answer that I need. Because it's kind of strange, because on occasion, I come to him to find out, Lord, I just want to spend time with you. And the next thing I know, I have answers for things that I didn't even expect. I have, uh, I have solutions to things that I, I didn't know that I could have a, a solution to. But that preparation to meet him allows me to enjoy his presence and he to enjoy my presence. Because he asks for that very thing. Will you prepare your heart? Will you begin to address those things? Will you? Because if he reminds us of something... If he says, you know, I, I want to talk to you, but the truth is, we, we, do you remember what you said over here? Yes. It, it, you might as well answer the affirmative. Uh, the Lord always asks rhetorical questions. He already knows the answer before, before he ever asks. But he wants you and I to acknowledge them. Because sometimes our heart is those things that is deceitfully wicked, the scripture says. Because he comes to the very next verse and he addresses that in the manner that because our heart can deceive us. And uh, one of the most ridiculous things that, that you or I could probably hear today. But yet it is touted as a philosophy of life. And it's in almost every single Disney movie or every single Disney song they have. Follow your heart. Uh, you better be careful doing that. Scripture says that it is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. So in that manner, uh, God says, don't follow your heart. Follow uh, the verses that are on the last, uh, mercy and truth. But in that instance, and we'll look at that here in just a minute. But in this, God says, I, you got to be careful following your heart. So prepare your heart for your meeting because a prepared heart will help with the pronouncement of the tongue. And he tells us that specifically in this. So sometimes when you don't know the answer, sometimes when you don't know what to say, the best thing to do is begin to try to go to him with that prepared heart. In other words, to say, Lord, I want to be able to come to you, but sometimes there's some things that I need to straighten up. Maybe I need to confess something. Maybe I need to admit something. Maybe I need to address something in my own heart and life. And in that manner, it is that preparation that is there. So the question kind of comes to you and I, what are we willing to make adjustments about our heart before we come to him? Or as we're coming to him, or so we may come to him. Is there ever been that occasion where maybe you don't have a free discourse to be able to talk with someone? Maybe you just don't feel like you can tell them anything or talk with them. Maybe there's somebody that, uh, maybe, you have a, maybe you have a boss that you know, I can't talk to them about things because it's going to turn around on me. I have to be careful about what I say. Maybe there's uh, some instance where uh, maybe you have that friend that you have to be careful telling them things or it's going to be published on Facebook. Maybe there's, uh, and so the preparation before you go. There's sometimes, uh, maybe you have a, a, a friend, acquaintance that's usually negative. And uh, maybe on occasion they, they have a tendency that everything begins to turn negative. And so you kind of plan the conversation before you ever get there. And uh, you kind of have an idea of what you're going to talk about and how you're going to deal with things. <laughs> we had the little occasion one time where 
we had, uh, I remember Brother Ted and Miss Becky, we had gone to one of the meetings there uh, at First Baptist Church, whether it was pastor school or, or one of the other meetings that, that was going on at the time. And uh, on, the, on this particular occasion, there were some young men that were playing trumpets. And, uh, and so it, it, then after that, every single time we started talking about something that would begin to trill off into the negative, somebody would say, didn't those boys play those trumpets awfully nice tonight? And so, or something along those lines. It was kind of that reset button. It was so, we didn't let uh, things go overboard. We didn't let things, the conversation take a, a negative turn so that we could keep on the positive side. God says, will you prepare your heart so things don't turn to the negative? Look, it, it does us no good to go to God and just complain about what's going on. He already knows. Why don't we go to God and say, God, help me with a solution. How can I improve this circumstance? How can I improve this situation a little bit better? Because I want you to notice a verse that, uh, that is here in this very same chapter. We're not going to deal with it a great deal tonight. But look at verse number seven, if you would, please. Verse number seven says, when a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. See, that preparation in the heart will do a number of things for you and begin to give you free ability to speak with God about what's going on. Because those other things now are set aside and you're coming to him to get solutions and spend time with him, not just to bring complaints and moanings and murmurings to him. Now, he will listen to them. He's got big shoulders. The truth is, if I have to complain to somebody, I'd rather complain to him because he has answers. And uh, when I come to him to uh, address something, I may not know what to do. And uh, one of the first things he may say is, you've brought a bunch of negative to me. Can you, uh, can you create some positive, please? You say, yeah, I'm positive that this is the problem, Lord. I am. And so, but uh, in that manner, there's oftentimes some things that he wants us to adjust somewhat. And so that leads us to the very next thing that is here. In verse number two, it says, all the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes. But the Lord weighed the spirits. Number one, I said the preparation of the heart. But number two, the intention of the mind. The intention of the mind. You see, the very last part of the verse says, but the Lord weigheth the spirits. What is our intent when we come to him? Is it to spend time with him? Or is it just to acquire something for our benefit? You know, God is interested in answering prayer. He, he does. That is a great deal of what he does. But sometimes... He just wants somebody to spend time with him. Maybe, uh, uh, okay, let's say for instance, I'll pick on the birthday boy, all right? Maybe sometimes Robert's just sitting there and they're watching John Wayne on the TV and uh, Miss Kathy's there and they've already been eating their popcorn and things like that and he kind of just scoots over a little bit. And as, uh, as he scoots over a little bit, he just kind of reaches over and grabs Miss Kathy's hand just to sit there for a minute. And she asks, what are you doing? I, said, I just wanted to sit closer to you. Now her response is, give me some room. I ain't got no room over here. Give me some. But God never does that. When we uh, scoot over close to him just to be close to him, and uh, we say, Lord, I know you love me, but would you just show me that you love me? I don't know how many times I've done that. And sometimes the littlest thing shows up, and it, it, could be, it could be anything at all. It could just be something that's, uh, that catches my attention that's amazing. It may be something as simple as, as and he is, I, I don't know how to describe how, how good God is, honestly. Uh, last week, uh, well, I guess it was last week, uh, a few things had been uh, taken care of. And the next thing you know, the, uh, <laughs> the, the, I get the notice from the bank that, your, your account is extremely low. And it's like, oh, Lord, I, I didn't plan on that. That's not exactly what happened. And just out of the blue, the insurance company that was supposed to send me uh, a check for something a, a number of months ago all of a sudden shows up just to take care of the need right there. And uh, so graciously, God does that on many, many occasions just to say, <laughs> I know where you're at. I know what's going on. I love you. Sometimes it's as simple as somebody sending you a note. Sometimes it's that text message and, uh, from somebody. Sometimes it's just a, 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 an encouraging word. Sometimes it, is just, it doesn't matter what it is. It is just God saying, I know who you are. 
I know where you're at, and I love you. You see, as the, the intention of the mind is this. As he says here, all the ways of man are clean in his own eyes. We sometimes think that, <laughs> I, I use the expression like this. There's been the occasion where uh, I've come to, to my children and I've used the statement, all right, if something is done like that, don't think, I, I don't want you to do it like you think it's okay. I want you to do it like I think it's okay. And in other words, I'm saying, if, if you think it's all right, go a little bit further. Do it just a little bit better or, or something along those lines. Because in this, uh, in this manner, God says, I know that you think everything's all right, but I want you to think like I think everything's all right. It helps us to understand that sometimes if it's that good, better, best, never let it rest until your good is better and your better is best. In other words, if God was literally inspecting what I was doing, if he was expect, uh, inspecting exactly what I am saying, if he is watching what I am doing, what improvements would he make in what I do think and how I'm making my, uh, as I'm doing things? I find myself on many occasions, now, perfect? Absolutely not. Of course not. I, I try to do what I think would be right. I try to do what I uh, hope would be right. But sometimes I, I miss. And in that manner, there's, if, if I know something needs to be straightened up and cleaned up, if I know something needs to be adjusted, if I know something needs to be done, do, does it bother you that it's undone? Does that picture that's hanging crooked on the wall, do you have to get straightened up or you can't sleep? Is there some things that if it's there and uh, it, it just bothers you? Right now, there is there is dirt on the inside of my car. I know it's there, and I want to go clean that off so badly. And uh, this afternoon, I had a choice of getting the spray out and cleaning it or taking a nap. And the nap won this time. And, uh, but uh, <laughs> before tomorrow finishes up for sure, that's going to get straightened up because it's got to. I can't just stand. I, I, I just can't leave it in that manner. There's some things that, that are easily left. There's other things that just bother you. All right, for instance, every single man that's in here there is something in your house right this moment that your wife has told you she didn't care for. But yet for you, it's just, it, it'll be okay. You know, I'll get to it when I get to it. It'll be all right. And so, but to her, it, it is, it's screaming out. And in that, see, that's why nobody's saying amen right now. Because every, every last one of you know I'm right. And, uh, and in that occasion, it's not because, it, it's not because you have evil intention. It's just, the, it's just somebody else's understanding and yours are two different things. Because we see here all the ways of man are clean in his own eyes. We think it's all right. Okay. Uh, there, and every single man that's in here is thinking right now, Pastor, I'd like to tell you something about my wife, but I'm not going to do it. Because there, and, and, and every last fellow is saying, you know, if my wife would never find out, I would probably tell. But somehow she finds out. So I'm not saying. So the intention of the mind is, I'd like somebody to know this, but they're not going to find out from me. If the Holy Spirit reveals it to you, pastor, that would be all right, but I'm not going to. The intention of the mind. You see, God says, when you're coming to me, I want to make sure that the intentions that you have are sometimes honorable in that manner. Do you just want to clobber somebody else because you're mad at them? He says, I, I don't want you to come necessarily for that reason only. He said, I'd like for you to come just to spend time with me so that we can spend some time together. Just as the, the songwriter put it, just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. To have that closer walk, what would it take to have that closer walk with the Lord? Part of it's going to be the preparation of the heart, the intention of the, the mind. This is the one that sometimes we uh, sometimes have the difficult time with. Verse number three. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Now, there's a reason why God left it in that order, because he says, I want you to do what you're supposed to do, and then I'll explain to you why that's the way you're supposed to do it. I know many times we want to know, well, why do I have to do it that way? Why? 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 That's a, that, that's a prime, as little kids are starting to grow up, that's going to be their favorite word. Why? And the other one is no. And, uh, well, they get away from the no early on. But uh, the next one will be why? Why? And uh, why is never a bad question. It's like, but the answer sometimes comes from the adult, because I said so, that's why. 
Now, God sometimes comes to you and I and he says, if you'll do what I've asked you to do, I'll explain to you why. Sometimes we want to know the why before we do it to evaluate whether it's worth our time and effort. And God says, I don't want you to evaluate. I want you to obey. So you do what I've asked you to do, and then I'll tell you why you've done it. And in that manner, uh, and by the way, that's the best way to deal with God anyway. Because our deeds are something that sometimes makes us think, well, God doesn't want to talk to me because I've done something I shouldn't do. But the truth is, that's the time you need to talk to him. That's the, need that you, that's the time that you need to spend some time with him. But the deeds of the hand, the preparation of the heart, the intention of the mind, the deeds of the hand. And it's interesting because there comes a point sometimes that God addresses another thing that sometimes keeps us a little bit separated from him. Notice if you would please, uh, we'll just read down through the verses. We'll stop in verse number five. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. And by the way, that's so that you can see an example and not follow it. That's so you can see how that, uh, uh, how that retribution comes to those that disobey him and, uh, and learn a lesson. But verse number five gives us one other thing. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Hmm. So it reminds us of this because it goes on to say, though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. God is reminding us of this. Our associations of the, uh, for the action that is going to be done. The association for the action. God is interested in who you associate with because he knows very clearly that sometimes the individuals that we hang around, we're going to become. You see, scripture reminds us that he that walketh with wise men shall be wise. But the principle is this, whoever you walk with, you're going to become somewhat like. You just will. And in that manner, he is reminding us, you better choose the most positive individuals to walk with, the most beneficial people to walk with. And the interesting thing is this, God allows those people to cross our paths. And sometimes the very person that is going to help us do right are the ones that we don't like the most. You want to know why? Because they're a great deal like you and I. And it's, we'll see something that we don't like in them, so we don't want to spend time with them. But the truth is, that individual may have something that you and I need. God sometimes will let somebody, and by the way, the person that is going to be beneficial to you has crossed your path already, and they are already in your pathway to come. God has designed that. But the associations for the actions. So sometimes we don't go to God because the associations that we have. Isn't it interesting that when it came time that Moses was going up to Mount Sinai to get the Ten Commandments, the people that were able to go with him, one of them was Joshua. Because the scripture says that Joshua was the minister of Moses. Who did he hang around? The most positive individual that he could. And God let him go places that others did not go. Moses went outside the camp to go to the tent to meet with God. And when Moses left and began to come back, the Bible says that Joshua stayed there still in the tent to take some more time with God. It's interesting to see some of the things that, that took place. It's interesting to watch some of the things and, and how the associations that you and I have will make a difference in our walk with God. It's kind of interesting because the associations that we have are sometimes for the action to take place. And God makes it very clear in verse number five. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. That is the warning to be careful about the people that you and I are going to associate with. Because he goes on to say, though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. Just because you have a friend in this world doesn't mean that you're going to have a friend in heaven. Well, we agree on this, Lord. It doesn't matter whether you agree. It matters whether God agrees. You say, but, but you know, the majority, the democracy, God says, uh, I don't deal with democracies a great deal. This is the thing that I have, I have sovereign rule. I don't care if you get the whole group against me. It doesn't matter. I'll still be right. You'll still be wrong. And God is going to operate in that. And the quicker that we get to that point, the better off we'll be. Well, everybody's doing it. <laughs> As the, the famous teenage saying. But in that instance, God says, it doesn't matter whether everybody's doing it. Moses was up on the mountain. When they came down, all of a sudden, they, uh, they began to listen. And they, they heard some big turmoil. And, uh, and uh, I... If I recall correctly, Joshua said, it sounds like singing. Our, 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 what did he say? It was, uh, sounds like the sound of war. And there's something along those lines. I, I'd have to just read it to, to remind myself here now. But then all of a sudden Moses says, no, it's the sound of reveling. 
And when they got down there, sure enough. Now, why wasn't Aaron on the mountain with Moses? Why was he down there making a calf? Why was he down there gathering up the gold to make a, an idol? Why was he doing those things? It's kind of interesting because those that were with Moses had the opportunity to do some great things. Even though the majority <coughs> of folks now were trying to gather up a, and make themselves a god to head back to Egypt, God says, it's not going to work like this. Moses was angry. I don't blame him. He throws the Ten Commandments down and says, they're not going to listen to these anyway. And God said, no, I've, I've got to, <laughs> you still got to give them the truth. They still need to hear it. Because that, that leads us to the very last part. Notice in verse number six, the Bible says, by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. It's not going to be through anger. It's not going to be through devastation in that manner. He says the thing that's going to make the difference for the children of Israel are the very same thing that are going to make a difference for you and I, the cleansing of the soul, the cleansing of the soul. You see, by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. In that manner, the preparation of the heart is going to be a thing that's going to help us to associate with God. The intentions of our mind are going to be that which is going to govern what we ask and why we're coming to God. The deeds of our hand will sometimes keep us from coming, but should not be one of those things that keep us from uh, attending an audience with God. The associations of, uh, of, for the action is uh, one of the things that sometimes the associations that we have may lead us closer. And by the way, you ought to have somebody in your life that helps you get closer to God and will remind you of things and remind you of times that you need to be closer to him. That's the kind of associations that you and I need. The problem is the very next thing that is, well, in the same verse that is there, everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Have you had that friend that has told you sometimes what you need to hear, but because of your pride? you didn't want to listen to him and God says the very reason why I gave you a good friend is to help you but you're wanting to get angry at them and in that manner Moses got angry he threw the ten commandments down now God was very gracious and he was very merciful and he rewrote them again that's another reason why don't worry about man trying to destroy the word of God God already has it settled in heaven he'll just rewrite it he'll just do it again and in that manner, as Moses then carried him down there to give him to the Ten Commandments, and then afterwards for years and years to come, that very same table of stone was the ones that resided in the Ark of the Covenant. And in that manner, we see here mercy and truth. Iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil, that cleansing of the soul. You see, the, the next verses that are up here in verses seventeen through or 7 through 15, we're not going to go over them tonight, basically describe how to act, and how to behave. But God says, before you get to those things, make sure that you take care of the, your heart, your mind, your hands, those that you associate with, and the cleansing of the soul. Take your request and begin to come to him and say, Lord, I, I've just messed up. And I need your truth to keep me from doing those things that I should not. Forgive me for where I failed. Cleanse my, and just go through that cleansing process. Scripture reminds us that uh, if you want to have your heart cleansed, it's by the cleansing of the water of the word. 1 John 1, 9 reminds us of that faithful thing. Because we are sinful, because we know that, if we confess our sin. But the whole contingency is this, if. Because you don't have to. But what kind of walk do you want to have with God? Do you want him to anticipate your arrival, look forward to your coming, and enjoy the fact that you come to him? I think it's interesting because I, I didn't jot it down, but I'm reminded that in the New Testament, Jesus is beginning to pray to the Father. And he prays like this as he begins. He says, I know you always hear me. Isn't it amazing that when we have an opportunity to come to the throne room of grace, that we can know for a fact God always hears me. Always. He's always listening. His ear is always attentive. But is he listening to what we say? Is he hearing what we need? He always knows. But the truth is, have we come with that prepared heart, with our mind ready for the intentions that we need to get from him? The deeds of our hand are, have been adjusted. The associations that we have have, uh, have been those that are positive. And then our soul has been cleansed because we have sought his forgiveness for things that we should not have done. 
our meetings with God are sometimes those things that, now all of these can happen in just a very short, brief time. It's not that it takes a long time. Matter of fact, it takes a very short period of time. But the truth is, when we want to talk with God and spend time with him, he expects us to be prepared, come to him with that prepared heart so that we can uh, begin to then spend time with our God. He enjoys our coming. He enjoys our being there. He wants to sometimes spend time with us as much as, and by the way, he wants to spend time with us more than we want to spend time with him. But in that instance, sometimes it's not just to get a request. Sometimes it's just to spend time to be close to him. The Lord reminds us, as Jesus said, I call them disciples, number one, to be with me. I just want them to spend time with me. Sometimes spending time with God in those meetings with him, just follow this procedure that is there. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Father, thank you again for the opportunity to be in your house tonight. Thank you again, Lord, for your word that gives us direction, understanding, and lets us see your character. And Lord, I do ask that you'd please just help us now. We know that uh, in just a few hours, we're going to, for the most part, go back into the, the workplace, into the world, and we'll hear the words that we have not heard all day today. We'll see the things that we have not seen all day today. We will be involved with things that we have not seen at all today. And Father, you know that uh, we need your help, we need your presence, we need your protection. And God, I do ask that you'd please help us to be the light that people need to see. Help us to reflect your light because of our time that is spent with you. And I'm reminded again, Lord, even as Moses had spent time with you, that uh, it was very evident on Moses that he had spent time with you. I ask that you'd please help us now to be that light, that uh, reflection of you that the world needs to see. And I ask that you'd please just help us now as we spend our time with you that we would not only need to come to you but desire to come to you. We ask, of course, for your help. With our heads bowed with our eyes closed, the question tonight is, do you spend time with God? Do you take some time to just spend time with him? Not because you're bringing a request, but it's just, Lord, I don't understand why you want to spend time with me, but I'm here. And I just want to take some time to love you and allow you to give me direction, understanding, or just spend time, whatever the case may be. Maybe the Lord's spoken to your heart tonight. Maybe it's just time to consider, do I come to the Lord and he hears me? Have I been preparing my heart, my mind, the actions, my associations? Have I cleansed my heart? Maybe it's time to just consider those things before we come to him and see what a difference those preparations make. Let's all stand with our heads bowed and with our eyes closed. As the instruments begin to play, if God's spoken to your heart tonight, the altar's open. You may come.